Urban Dogs LLC is not responsible for any damages to property, humans, or animals by anyone attempting these procedures. Do not attempt to do any vacuum counter conditioning with dogs or puppies that have a propensity or a history of biting the cord. This can cause electrocution and death. Please always exercise caution and safety of the dogs and the humans involved in the training. When counter conditioning a dog to tolerate or like a vacuum, one must consider the entire stimulus associated to it. There's the sight. Few other things, if any, look like the vacuum. The scents associated to the vacuum are also many and they're very salient. That will be a big part of the association. The sounds of the vacuum encompass more than just the whir of the motor. There is the click and the clack of the pieces to the vacuum, there is the cord coming in and out, the wheels moving, and the sound of the motor, and then all of that combined together. We also have to consider the movements of the humans when vacuuming. Humans will be bending and twisting and moving, and they are now pushing an object that makes sounds. By breaking all these pieces down and making sure the dog is okay with each one by being under threshold, we can get some pretty good results in a short amount of time. The variable here are the mechanics of the humans doing the training. They'll need to be spot on, and that will be the deciding factor in the results being good or poor. Also, the dog's existing associations to the vacuum need to be at least tolerable. If the dog goes completely over threshold by the mere sight or sound of the vacuum and is reacting to the point of being stressed out, do not attempt this. You would want to start at the lowest level possible if your dog has extreme stress issues associated to the vacuum. Manage the dog by having the dog out on a walk or in the backyard playing when you vacuum if your dog is stressed out by it. You can also manage the dog in a room farther away from where you're vacuuming and give the dog a very valuable work to eat toy when you vacuum. This is also a great option. Hi, this is Drayton Michaels, dog trainer and behavior technician from Urban Dogs and Pitbull Guru. This is vacuum desensitization and counter conditioning with my friend Batman. Yes, this dog's name is Batman. He's an American pit bull terrier. He's about one and a half years old. And you see him here checking out the vacuum. The view you're looking at right now is from the front of our facility. And uh, we're gonna split the view here in a sec. So I notice he's doing a big sniff. So I mark and pay again. And here's our video split. On the left is the view from the front of the facility. And the right is the view of the overhead in the back of the facility. Batman's uh, humans report that he's okay with the vacuum. Uh, they have a whole house vacuum system, so they don't have a vacuum like this. Uh, he does have some uh, apprehension or startle. Uh, as they say, he'll start dancing around their floor sweeper. So they are able to do that, but they say it's kind of hit or miss. He may just sit and watch or he may uh, be excited. We have a great rapport with impulse control and basic training. Uh, he's boarded with me and we've worked on leash, off leash, in dog play. And uh, as you can tell, he follows me around pretty much wherever I go in anticipation of something good happening. Um, I'm not just walking around aimlessly here. I am doing rule outs and I'm also not putting so much focus on the vacuum only. I'm breaking up the counter conditioning with other things that are fun and also that are inconsequential that he may think predict a treat, but do not. Uh, it's very important to have fun. And you see here, I get a little wheel squeak and a vacuum move. So I mark and pay. And uh, Batman's having fun, there's no doubt about it. You can tell he's, he's pretty much thrilled to be working and doing this, so that's a good sign. So my current criteria is pretty much anything that he pays attention to with the vacuum, uh, whether he does it on his own, whether I move it, um, will be marked and paid for. Marking, in this case, means the word yes, like the clicker, and then payment in this case is uh, probably a high value food treat. I don't know exactly what I was paying with, but I'm sure it was uh, something that he found to be extra special. Some people outside, so he gets momentarily vexed. We do a little jolly talk, ask for a leave it, he comes back, I mark and pay. And then I let him see what's going on outside and uh, let him know it's all okay. Uh, and then we shut the shade. Uh, again, the take home here is when your dog gets momentarily vexed in your home or in your yard, don't freak out. Just ask the dog to leave it and reassure. Again, I move the vacuum. 
Rocky Orients, I mark and pay. Then I go back to doing some more rule outs, messing with the chairs, walking around. And again, this helps the dog to really focus in on the fact that they're getting paid for the big stuff, the people barking outside, the vacuum, etc. Knowing Batman's propensity uh, to go up on our table here and investigate for toys or treats, and not wanting to have that interrupt the work, I decide to put up an X pen. One of the best games that Batman uh, plays is Tug. He has a super drop it, um, and he really, really loves it. Notice that I stop playing Tug, and I pull out the cord to the vacuum. Then I reward him for checking out the vacuum with more Tug. This is a really great thing to do when you're counter conditioning to something like a vacuum. Uh, there aren't too many things uh, that replicate the vacuum. It's, it's a very salient uh, piece of stimulus for the dog. Um, but when you're doing this, if you have tug or fetch and, and, and mixed in, you're really gonna get more mileage out of the dog because it becomes a game. Uh, the vacuum is less threatening and you can also temper it with some life rewards, not necessarily treats for uh, all the associations to the vacuum. A big part of the vacuum counter conditioning is making sure that the dog has a good association to the cord being pulled out or rolled back in. And you see me give Batman a big yes and then a treat for that. And then we get him back to his favorite game of tug. So I'm gonna load up on a new level of treat here because I know that I'm gonna go turn that vacuum on for a flash. It's gonna just go on and off, but it's gonna be a new part of the stimuli. And I wanna have something better than what I've been paying because the stimulus is gonna become more intense. So I literally turn it on and turn it off, mark and pay, and then go back to some play. And you notice that my rate of reinforcement is increasing both in value and in frequency as the vacuum is going to be also going up in intensity. I'm playing more, uh, I've raised my value of the treats. So again, the take home is, what are you paying for and what are you paying with? So the take home here is, what is Batman more concerned about? Playing tug or that vacuum being turned on? Or even me walking towards that vacuum? It appears, and there's really no other way to look at this, that Batman wants to play tug. And the sudden sound of the vacuum, its presence, its sense, anything associated to it has not um, made him so fearful or apprehensive that he can't uh, either enjoy a game of tug or simply be in the room. Um, and this isn't the same for all dogs, but you're gonna see in a moment how fast he has uh, associated this vacuum, in this room at least, to uh, being a fun game. So 
So here I'm going to turn the vacuum on for the longest time yet, and I'm going for my operant uh, conditioning here with Leavitt's. Like I said earlier, Batman and I have a really good rapport as far as impulse control. Uh, I trip myself up on the wire here, and he gets a little startled, so I abandon everything and just get that straightened out so we can continue. In this sequence, I'm asking for the Leavitts, and I'm paying with food. I like that he went for the little bunny that I tossed, but he came back, wants to play the uh, checkout vacuum for treats game. Here I'm paying for those wheel squeaks and uh, you know I want to be aware that I'm paying him something while the vacuum is on so uh, always make sure your rate of reinforcement is nice and high and you'll see here in this stretch that my rate of reinforcement actually drops and it's going to contribute uh, to his more excited behavior later on in the session I should have already paid him at least three or four treats I should have paid him for that self disengage I should pay him for this close proximity um, I should pay him right here for checking out that tug toy. Uh, and in general, I should have had a rate of at least every two to three seconds, I should have been marking and paying him for all of this vacuum stimulus. But alas, I did not. And um, that's why we do these films. And that's why we watch them much like uh, sports. These are game films to help us improve. After watching this video uh, a number of times, uh, after I had uh, marked and paid and tossed his tug toy and he didn't go for it, uh, I probably should have ended the trials here. I pushed a little far. Again, no harm, no foul. He's obviously having a great time. He's not over threshold. But in hindsight, the thing to take away from all these films is to look at them like game films and how uh, we can improve uh, and how I can improve. Remember, this session was done off the cuff. It wasn't planned. Uh, I had very little history of his vacuum association, so I was generally assessing as I was training. You'll see here in the tail end of the session that his behavior is getting a little bit more excited, um, and I'm having to do uh, leave it a little bit more frequently. So on my part, I should have ended the session a few seconds earlier. Uh, the duration was a little bit too high, but that's okay. Um, again, these films are designed to help me and anybody else improve. And on the way out, you'll see here that I pay him for all the sights and sounds that are associated with the vacuum, even at this level.